Hello guys, welcome back to TechDose and in this video we will look at count the number of arrays with k matching adjacent elements which is from lead code number 3405. There are a lot of prerequisite for this problem but if you have already solved count the number of balanced permutation from 3343 then you will be able to solve this because 3343 has all the concepts needed to solve 3405 and this problem 3343 is harder as compared to 3405. This had already occurred in the daily challenge in the last month itself. Now the topics that you will require to solve this problem is binary exponentiation, the Fermat's little theorem and how to calculate the modulo multiplicative inverse using the Fermat's little theorem, some modulo arithmetic as well as calculating factorial and inverse factorial. So these all things have already been shown in 3343 and I have made a detailed video on this so the link will be present in the description below so please watch this if you don't know about these concepts. So in this problem we will not be going through all these basic things which I have already explained in another video okay. Here we will uh, try to focus on the given problem statement and try to solve it. In this problem you are given three integers n m k a good array arr of size n is defined as follows each element in array is in the inclusive range of 1 to m that means any array element a at i can be assumed to be in the range of 1 to m exactly k indices i where i ranges from 1 to less than n satisfy the condition that array at i minus 1 equals equals array at i that means they are talking about adjacent pairs being equal so 1 comma 1 being equal means array at i equals array at i minus 1 Return the number of good arrays that can be formed according to the given set of rules and since the count can be very large we need to return it modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7. So I think the problem statement is clear. In this case if you look at the first example n value is 3, m value 2, k value is 1. So they have already made 4 good arrays. In this case the number of items should always be 3. So in all the 4 arrays that they have generated the number of items are 3. Then m and k k is saying about the number of equal pairs so they are maintaining one equal pair in all these four arrays right one equal pair and m is actually the range of item so i can have a range of all the items from one to two so all the items that is used in any of these arrays will always range from one to two so following these rules uh, we could generate only four arrays and that is why there are four count of good arrays okay so this problem is not very difficult to understand uh, if you look at the constraints the n value is 10 to the power 5 m value is 10 to the power 5 so we have to write an algorithm in not uh, n m time because if you write it then it will be 10 to the power 10 which is way beyond your 10 to the power 8 which will run in one second right so this will be giving you a tle we have to write the algorithm in order of n or n plus m or you can say n log n time but not exceeding this time complexity okay according to the constraint so once we have seen this let's try to understand uh, it with an example so n was representing the count of elements array at i can be in the range of 1 to m and k was representing the number of adjacent equal pairs let's assume that our sequence is uh, triple a triple b triple c so in this case i'm taking nine items and the k value being six saying that there are six equal pairs if you check then uh, one zero two one four three five four seven six and eight seven are all the six equal pairs now if the array size is nine or you can say n then how many actual pairs will exist you will have total n minus one pairs okay you can count here there will be eight pairs only and out of them six are equal pairs so how many will be unequal pairs it will be n minus one minus k so this will be the number of unequal pairs right now in this case i have taken uh, common items which are lying together called as run okay or you can say common run i will be calling it run so the first run of item has three equal elements that is why i have written a the value of a b c will all lie uh, within the range of one to m okay so the number of common runs are in our given example is three okay a b and c three runs are given so the number of unequal pairs that you can generate will always be in between the common runs where 
if you take the pairing of 3 with 2 then it will be unequal and if you take the pairing between 6 and 5 then it will be unequal other than that it will never be possible to generate an unequal pair okay therefore if you uh, know what are the number of equal pairs and the size of the array you can always get the number of unequal pairs and the unequal pairs plus one will give you the number of runs if i have to have two unequal pairs two unequal pairs then uh, in this case i have to have three runs right i think it makes sense so i can say that if r is the number of runs then r minus one will be the number of unequal pairs this is a relationship that we have got now if you look at it n minus k minus 1 was the number of unequal pairs and here also it is r minus 1 so i can compute r minus 1 equals n minus k minus 1 and i get the relation r equals n minus k or k equals n minus r okay now the number of ways to distribute the runs r1 r2 r3 in the same order or sequences like what do i want to say here in this case you know that if i have r runs then I will have R minus one number of unequal pairs, right? And uh, if I want to create R minus one unequal pairs or R runs, then I will have to have R minus one number of partition points or you can say bars. So in this case, if I, if I generate three uh, groupings, then I will have to put two partition points. Now I can place these two partition point anywhere in between 0, 1, 2, 7, 8. So how many options do I have? I will have n minus 1 options to put the bars. Isn't it? n minus 1 options to put the bars. So I can say that I will have n minus 1 partition points. And the number of bars that I will have to use will be r minus 1 to get r number of runs. So the number of bars will be r minus 1. Therefore, the total ways to do this, I will call it as c1 and that will be n minus 1 c r minus 1 that means in the total available options n minus 1 i want to place r minus 1 so r minus 1 choices or picks will be made out of total n minus 1 available choices so if you uh, again replace this r minus 1 value then you will get n minus 1 minus r minus 1 because this is uh, something like writing ncr can also be written as nc n minus r so using this formulation we have done this change and after this, this 1 and 1 gets cancelled out. So this becomes n minus r. And you know that n minus r is equals to k. So I can write n minus 1 ck. Okay, so this is the count 1. Okay, count 1. That means the total ways to generate r minus 1 partition point or you can say to generate r runs will be n minus 1 ck. I am calling this as count 1. Right? Once you are done with this, then again for the same example what can be the values of a what can be the values of a so the values of a can range anywhere from 1 to m so there are m options for a but what can be the values of b values of b can also range from 1 to n but i should maintain that this uh, 3 2 when they are compared b a they should not be equal okay so i cannot have b value equals to a except for a it can have any other option so m minus 1 options if you look at C, then C can also have all the available options 1 to M. But then if you compare 6 with 5, they should not be equal. That means C and B should not be equal. So except for B, whatever value is assigned to B, C can take any other value. So M minus 1 options for C as well. And like this, even if you had D's and E's, D will also have M minus 1 options and so on. So only the first run will have M options and all the r minus 1 runs will have m minus 1 options and that is why the total ways to assign the numbers to generate the valid sequence will be m times m minus 1 raised to the power of r minus 1 because there are a total of r runs and the first run will have m option and the last r minus 1 uh, runs will have m minus 1 options okay now if you are thinking about uh, you know how why i cannot arrange in some in some order something like this let's say in this order why can't i do something like this so you can do but already we are assuming r runs already we are assuming r runs so in this case if you do that this will be r1 this will be r2 r3 r4 r5 and r6 so first you have to fix on how many runs you want because the number of unequal pairs are also fixed it is fixed because the number of equal pairs are fixed to exactly k the problem says about exactly k so when the number of 
equal pairs are exactly k the unequal pairs will also be fixed isn't it like the total pairs was n minus 1 number of equal pairs are this so the number of unequal pairs must also be exactly fixed to n minus k minus 1 so the arrangement can only shift in between whatever we have assigned isn't it it cannot suddenly increase or decrease the number of runs number of runs will always be fixed okay now we have understood uh, two types of count the first type of count which i showed here right which was telling you about how to place the partition points to generate our uh, number of runs and in and in the second count i was trying to use all the different values for each of the runs in the available option from 1 to m so the total number of combination is going to be c1 times c2 which is the number of arrays with k matching adjacent elements so c1 was n n n minus 1 ck and c2 was m times m minus 1 traced to the power of r minus 1 and calculating this will give you the answer this is the entire solution for the problem i hope it is clear now once you have understood this let's look at a simple dry run in this case i am taking n equals to 6 m equals to 3 k equals to 2 so i have four runs here i have four runs this is run one run two run three and run four okay now the number of adjacent pair n minus one is five and the equal adjacent pair k value is two so the c1 count n minus one ck can be calculated using the factorial and inverse factorial which can be calculated by the fermat's little theorem this will be defining the modulo multiplicative inverse as i will be showing you in the code and also in the balanced permutation problem this has been explained in a lot of detail right from the very basic so please watch that so we will be calculating count one count two will be m times m minus one raised to the power r minus one so m times binary exponentiation of m minus one comma r minus one okay so if you multiply you will get count two and the final answer will be c1 times c2 always take a mod of 10 to the power 9 plus 7 because it may exceed the integer range okay so since all the things are clear you know that the pre-computation of factorial and inverse factorial of size n will be order of n and then binary exponentiation of a raised to the power of mod minus 2 or something similar will be order of log of mod base 2 okay so in this case the base 2 is constant so i'm removing it and log of mod so this is the time complexity of our code and space complexity is order of n to store the pre-computed factorial and inverse factorial. I hope this is clear. Let's now look at the code. If you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months, then we have brought for you both the DSA and the system design live interview training program. The most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this code I am using LL for long long mod is 10 to the power 9 plus 7 and I am defining factorial and inverse factorial now this is the standard binary exponentiation function so i have already made a detailed video on binary exponentiation you can also consider watching that now uh, we will be coming to this count good arrays right so in this case nmk values are given and i will be pre-computing the factorial and inverse factorial so simply you know how to calculate factorial and inverse factorial in the inverse factorial you have to use mmi which is modulo multiplicative inverse okay and uh, using that you can pre-compute everything and once it is pre-computed i'm just finding count one in the in the runways count two in the ways to assign and then multiplying them both and taking modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7 we are always multiplying with one long long so that uh, the entire multiplier gets converted to long long integer which is 64 bit integer if you don't do that then maybe you will overflow because 32 bit integer will overflow when you multiply two large numbers okay so this is the entire code and i hope it is clear if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible see you guys in the next video thank you